welcome to the chapter analysis of chapter 2 and the famous and popular poem entitled Song of Lawino authored by Okot Pibitek and I'm your presenter Hirano J. Miova. So the the title for chapter 2 is The Woman With Whom I Share My Husband With. This title is in line with the Lawino's view of the woman that Ocho takes as his lover or to a great extent as his new wife. So we're going to look at what Lawino says about her African culture compared to the Western culture through the way she looks at the woman with whom she shares a husband. This woman is, entitled, is, is named in the poem as Clementine or Clementina or in short Tina. So the winner says because Ocho rejects the old type, he is in love with a modern woman, a beautiful one who speaks English. So she feels that is actually one of the reasons why the husband begins to disconnect from her. But we can agree that times indeed have changed for Lawino. The marriage is no longer the way it was. There's no warmth, there's no love, there's no affection. So she says, but only recently we would sit close together, touching each other. Only recently I would play my bulb harp praises to my beloved. Only recently he promised that he trusted me completely. I used to admire him speaking English. This is her reminiscing about the wonderful times that she had with her husband in marriage and those times are gone. Such moments have gone indeed. Ocho is now in love with Clementine, the beautiful modern girl. Now beautiful modern girl here is not exactly uh, what we could accept as beautiful modern girl in Lawino's view. She refuses to accept Lawino as beautiful and exactly as modern if that at all was important. According to Lawino, Clementine's lips are red hot like glowing charcoal. She resembles the wild cat and w that has dipped its mouth in blood. Her mouth is like raw yours and it's like an open ulcer, like the mouth of a field. So she compares Lawino's lips after Lawino, she compares sorry, Clementine's lips after Tina um, Tina prepares makeup on her face and applies lipstick. The mouth looks really red like a wound, a really bad wound. So Lawino looks at this as Lawino something that Tina looks really witch, funny and uh, foul. strange. She says Tina dust powder on her face and it looks so pale. She resembles the wizard getting ready for the midnight dance. She does the ash date. The ash date here is the powder. She does the ash date all over her face and when little sweat begins to appear on her body, she looks like a guinea fowl. That is a satire on modern attempts to look more attractive. So on this point, we agree that some women do not know how to put makeup on their faces. Instead of putting makeup, they actually mess up. So what Lawino says is that perhaps this powder could be put at certain times and in a certain way and one of these times is that when she is sweating she has to apply powder so that the sweat disappears or actually take away uh, wipe off the sweat on her face instead of looking patched and look having stripes like a guinea fowl we continue looking at chapter 2 we analyze chapter 2 title is the woman with whom I share my husband and this woman in question is Clementine and our heroine or one that is citing the poem is Lawino. So Lawino provides an insight into her attitude towards synthetic products. She says the smell of carbolic soap makes me sick and the smell of powder provokes a ghost in my head. Does she actually have ghosts in her head? No, she just regrettably means she hates carbol the smell of carbolic soap so much that she is almost allergic. She hates it. It is then necessary to fetch a goat from my mother's brother. The sacrifice over the goat dance must sound. The ghost be laid 
and my peace restored so she feels when these ghosts begin to trouble her because of this carbolic soap a sacrifice has to be made so we see what people do when something when they feel like there's a ghost troubling them yes according to lawino cosmetics are harmful and in fact do not make one beautiful she dislikes dusting herself with powder that we have noticed as she says the thing is good on pink skin because it is already pale but if a black woman has used it it looks as if she has dysentery so lawino brings out something we even as have as men have noticed but uh, some women may not really apply the powder that matches their skin the person is black but goes to put golden or tony red powder what are you doing madam so at the end of the day it makes you look very strange so lawino has given us a beauty tip two. there and if there's a Analyzing woman or girl two, listening that, please Take Tina looks sickly and she is slow advice. moving. She is a piteous Robes. sight. Someone as the saying goes, one man's meat is another man's poison. Clearly, the so-called beautiful Clementine is actually ugly from Lawino's perspective. So Lawino refuses to look at Clementine as beautiful because she says sh she cannot use natural judgment on such a woman who uses artificial means to look beautiful. The reader is exposed to conflict of values regarding beauty between the traditional black culture and the western culture. In fact, chapter 2 an analyzes the debate between beauty, the view of beauty in the African tradition versus the view of beauty in the western tradition. What is beauty? Beauty, we can agree, is the inner way you feel about yourself and how you bring it out through what you do and how you dress. So she says some medicine have eaten up Tina's face. The skin on her face is gone and is raw and red. The face of the beautiful one is tender like the skin of a newly born baby. And she believes that this is, a, this is beautiful because it resembles the face of a white woman. So already here we see that blind imitation and loss of identity is what Tina is a victim of. Tina does not look at what she is in terms of skin tone and in terms of how people of her tribe could dress or how Africans generally dress she goes on or out to look like a woman in her dresses and the way she wears makeup so we see Lawino goes on to attack Tina we are later going to discuss the mode in which Lawino attacks Tina so we say her body resembles the ugly coat of the hyena her neck and arms have real human skins. She looks as if she has been struck by lightning or burnt like the Kongoni fire in a heart. Kongoni here is an actual weight, it's not in English. And her lips look like a wild cat which has dipped its mouth in blood. Her head is huge like that of a fowl, that of the ossuary. She looks like a witch like someone who has lost her head and she should be taken to the clan shrine her neck is rope like thin long skinny and her face sickly pale so here all these descriptions are according to how lawino views tina already now here we see that when she she likens tina to resembling an ugly coat of a hyena is because of the way um tina looks in her skin she's patched like in a way that the hyena is also patched brown here black there so she says why shouldn't how shouldn't a woman have standard skin just like every natural woman one of the reasons why lawino speaks so negative about tina is that she is jealous of her and lawino herself admits she says i do not i do not deny i'm a little jealous it is no good lying we all suffer from a little jealousy Apart from this, Lawino wants the reader to pity Tina. She, she describes Tina's breasts as, Her breasts are completely shriveled up. They are all folded dry skins. They have made nests of cotton wool, and she forced the bees of cowhide in the nest and caused them breasts. We learn that actually, Tina is an old modern woman pretending to be a young girl. 
Such women mount the tips of the cotoness so that they are sharp and with these they prick the chest of men. And the men believe they are holding the waist of young girls that have shot up. So we see that here Tina is a charlatan. She behaves like someone who is young but she is quite old. So this is one of the reasons that drive um, Lawino to ask herself why her husband is leaving her. For a woman who is even older, who seems to be older than Lawino herself. So why? Just because she looks modern. Interestingly, even such educated men as Ocho are deceived by such tricks of modern women. So these tricks have been highlighted as faking uh, the, the breast texture and the outlook. Song of Lawino's, Song of Lawino's, some of Lawino's comments border on scandal mongering and gossiping. So scandal mongering here, we mean ways that may not actually be true, that are said about someone just because you want to heap a lot of, a lot of negativity on that person based on what you're telling other people. So scandal mongering is just creating a scenario by which someone will be misunderstood will be judged exaggerating what you are seeing just to create an impression a wrong impression about someone uh, through gossiping of course so this this is one of her weaknesses and we mean lawino's weaknesses for example in describing clementine lawino says perhaps she has aborted many perhaps she had thrown her twins in the pit latrine there is no record that clementine has had children before but lawino says Perhaps she has aborted many just because of the way Clementine looks. Would you, how would you feel if these words were uh, these words were uh, referred to you? Lawino continues to attack her rival as she says Clementine walks as if her shadow has been captured. You can never hear her footsteps. She looks as if she has been ill for a long time. Actually, she is starving. She does not eat. She says she fears getting fat, that the doctor has prevented her from eating. Whether this information is true or not, we know that there are some women out there, ladies, even girls, who do not want to eat because they are afraid of getting fat. And these end up suffering from, from anorexia, where they almost become allergic to food. Some of them bring out this disease or call or have or have this disease in terms of where when they eat food they go and uh, prick their epiglottis with a toothbrush and they vomit food that has been kept in the stomach will be vomited but what the little energy that has been created from it will make them go this is how they avoid being fat at the end of the day some have actually died because the body has not received the, its uh, nutrients, they get sick and die. She says a beautiful woman must be slim like a white woman. And when she walks, you hear her bones rattling. Is it possible, ladies and gentlemen, to hear someone's bones rattling when you're moving? Where are the muscles in the body? Is that pers person a skeleton? So her waist resembles that of a onet. This is a, a, a bee. The beautiful is dead dry like a stump she's meatless like a shell on a dry riverbed uh, lawino here is bringing out the african and the general view that any person who has a certain level of uh, body texture looks healthy every person who's very slim looks sickly so she also scorns the fact that um Clementine has to look slim in order to look to look beautiful like a white lady. Is it true that all white women who are beautiful are slim? Or all beautiful women have to be slim? So all this is just prejudice. And if really Tina, really Tina actually was has been practicing slimming because of wanting to look to look good, that is wrong on her So Lawino is not jealous Lawino of Clementine exposing this. In the narrow sense of desiring t the sole purpose of Ocho, sole possession of Ocho, here it just means that Lawino doesn't 
actually is not exactly jealous because she's sharing Ocho with this woman. She's familiar with polygamy and knows no other form of marriage. So Lawino actually brings out the fact that she understands and she accepts polygamy as her part of her culture. She's simply mystified, shocked here, and annoyed that Ocho prefers a woman who is no younger than her and can match her in can match her in none of other women's accomplishments. So like we said earlier on, Lawino is shocked that the husband has gone to marry another woman or to take another woman as a lover who is no different from her. The woman is old and there's nothing really different to show up about her. Lawino feels she's a more a much better woman because she is natural and this woman is fake and artificial and relies on um, artificial aids like um, makeup to make her look beautiful. So Lawino presents her own view of an ideal woman. She says, the competition for a man's love is fought at the cooking place. When he returns from the field or from the hunt, she adds by saying, you win him with a hot bath and sour porridge. The wife who brings her meal first, whose food is good to eat, whose dish is hot, whose face is bright, and whose heart is clean, and whose eyes are dark like shadows. The wife, we continue, the wife whose jokes, who jokes freely, who eats in the open, not in the bedroom, Please take note of that. That's a sign of selfishness. And who is not dull like stale beer? A wife, this just means a, a woman who who entertains her husband. Such is a woman who becomes a headdress keeper. Now, Lawino is outlining the qualities of a woman there that is desired by every husband. Now, when we look at the headdress keeper, the headdress is um, he, headgear that a warrior a chief or a, some form of ruler would wear but this headdress would m always be in the house of his favorite wife so every house where the headdress keeper is found or where the headdress is found just know that that is the favorite wife of the ruler however Lawino feels Ocho is free to make his own choice and is not angry with Clementine but he must stop insults and abuses you should stop being half crazy and saying terrible things about her mother. She defends her traditional African customs passionately. The ways of your ancestors are good, as she says. Their customs are solid and not whole. They are not made from without. These customs are drawn from experience and from necessity. They don't just come from other lands, copied and pasted onto the people. No, they stem from the experiences of the people of old. So these people created these customs to avoid certain incidences or to encourage or to develop certain traits in their people. They are not thin. They are not breakable. They cannot be blown away by the winds because their roots reach deep in the soil. We see in most Western culture, most of the laws that are drawn always depend on who is judging, always depend on what other people can benefit from the case if it is in court. Finally, Lawino says we should tolerate even the customs we do not understand. She advises her husband to tolerate the customs which he no longer even accepts. And she says, I do not understand the ways of foreigners, but I do not despise their customs. Why should you despise yours? The chapter ends with a proverb, the pumpkin in the old homestead must not be uprooted. So she shows that she accepts traditions that she has nothing to do with because she's not from that place where the traditions come from. So already she advises the husband to continue embracing the customs he has discarded and tells him that despite her not being educated or not being exposed, she accepts traditions or customs from other lands. Lawino is not asking Ocho to cling to everything in this past, in his past but rather not to, to destroy, rather not to destroy things for the sake of destroying them. So if Lawino La is asking the husband, if you're going to move on, move on. 
but do not despise things because you can just despise them have respect for things so our commentary were created for now own good. we are saying sharing one man legally or legally is a source of conflict in many cultures religions and societies over the world many books filled with such interesting stories are all over from the desperate housewives i hope some of you have, have been following this series in the past years to the mexican soap and real life dramas all those operas all those soap operas uh, the real wives or whatever whatever all those dramas having sexual intrigues and marital discord as their selling point so we look at this polygamous arrangement that lawino and also have as a point of intrigue in main movies the setting in the poetic narrative song of lawino is no different set in the dim pre-colonial acholi community from the northern uganda a woman lawino laments the loss of her husband Ocho to her rival Clementina. So this is basically the summary and the description of the book. Thank you very much for attention, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you.